a gem, pretty sweet gem. But you know what's better than a single gem? It would be a whole row of gems. And of course, now we know the best way to make a row of gems would be with a loop. So let's use a for loop to draw 12 gems in a row, going from left to right across the screen. Ooh, like that. So we say for var i equals 0, i is less than 12, i plus plus. And then we'll just take this line and move it inside here. Okay, so now we have 12 gems, but they're actually all piled right on top of each other. Remember, we want them going across the screen. So that means we want to be changing the x. And 36 is the x right now, but we want it to be different each time. That means we want it to be dependent on i. So what we can do is simply say i times 36. And so then the first one is at 0, and then 36, and then 72, and et cetera, et cetera. Cool, so now we have a row of gems. And this, this kind of reminds me of those scenes in Indiana Jones or Aladdin where the hero discovers that underground treasure trove of gems, but they usually find way more gems than this. They, not just a row of gems, but a pile of gems. So how could we actually make gems going all the way down the screen too? Well, we could start by just repeating the for loop and copy pasting it and then changing this y each time. And so we'll change it 60 and then 90. Okay, so now we have three rows of gems, and that's cool. Um, but this is also getting really boring because all I'm doing is copying and pasting and changing this one little thing. And normally in the past, when we found ourselves writing repetitive code like that, we'd be like, oh, maybe we should just use a loop instead. But we're already using a loop. So what's the solution to avoid writing this, you know, doing this repetitive copy-paste? Well, it's something we call nested for loops, a loop within a loop. So what we're going to do is we're going to make an outer loop, and that's what's going to take care of going down the screen. And then our inner loop is going to keep taking care of what it's doing now, which is going from left to right. Let me show you what I mean. So for, and we'll use a different variable, j, since we're already using i. So for var j equals 0. And we'll say j is less than 13, and j plus plus. Okay, so that's going to be our outer loop. That's going to be in charge of going top to bottom. And then we're just going to take one of our previous for loops and put it inside there and fix the indenting. And we'll delete these old ones. Okay, so now what we have is we've got them all piled on top on the same row. So the thing is that we want to change the y. Right? That's what we were changing before when we were copying and pasting, and right now the y is always 90. So we want the y to change for each row. So just the way that the x is dependent on i, we want the y to be dependent on j. So we can go ahead and change this to something like um, maybe uh, j times 30. Ta-da! Yay! So many gems! Woo! All right, let's, let's walk through what this does. Again, the, the outer loop creates this variable j and you know increments it um, up to 13. And in each, in each execution of that outer loop, it runs this inner loop. And the inner loop creates the variable i and you know goes up to 12. And for each execution of the inner loop, it draws an image on the x and y, which are based off of i and j. And this i changes a lot more frequently than the j because of that. To try and understand this even better, let's try and actually visualize the i and j values. Um, so what I'll do is I'll comment out image, and then set a fill color, and I'm going to use a text command to show the value of j. So text j, and then I'll put it at an appropriate spot here. Okay, so now we can see j going from 0 to 12, and this is basically where our, our rows of gems were positioned as well, right? Um, and now let's visualize i and see how that changes. So for i, let's make it a different color. Um, and then we'll go and put the i somewhere and we'll change its x so that it goes across the screen. And we'll do the same thing for the y. Okay, so now we can see that the i is going from 0 to 11, and, and that this 
the you know the eye, as I was saying, it changes a lot more frequently, and and this line of code gets executed a lot more times than than this line of code because this line of code is getting executed for every execution of this inner for loop, whereas this line of code only gets executed for every execution of the outer loop. Um, so hopefully this, you know, visualizing the i and j, hopefully that helps you understand what's going on with these nested for loops better. But now let's bring back our gems because they're kind of cooler. Okay, so there's a lot you can do with nested for loops. If you just think about everything in, in the world that looks like a two-dimensional grid, like a chessboard, a quilt, the stars on the U.S. flag, cool patterns and wallpapers, um, but to start off your imagination, just play around with this code, uh, like by changing the image. I'll start off by changing it to heart to show you how much I love nested for loops. Aww.